all about the narrative, isn't it? And the message getting out to the international audience. Yes, uh, thank you for having me in, in your program. Uh, yes, I think it is, it is about uh, the narrative. And it's also about uh, how detailed uh, a lie uh, can be. Uh, part of the Israeli narrative, I don't know if this came out in English, but definitely in Hebrew, was that this was a decision taken by a very junior officer uh, who took the decision uh, in a, a blink of a moment uh, because of the uh, uh, intelligence that he received, which I think is a lie. I think Israel knew exactly who they targeted. They knew these were the, uh, the, the sons of Ismail Haniyeh. I do think also that they knew that there were grandchildren there, but didn't care. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, it's, it's not just a matter of one narrative against the other. It, it's really a, a fabricated kind of an explanation for something that, uh, you know, the pictures themselves tell the story in a very clear way. But I do agree, uh, if I may just add something, uh, uh, although there might be an immediate uh, reason for this, as, as your reporter has men uh, mentioned, you know, that uh, Netanyahu wanted this act in order to derail uh, the negotiation, which is definitely a feasible and probable explanation. One should remember that the Zionist movement, even before the creation of the State of Israel, uh, targeted Palestinian uh, uh, political elites, cultural elites, uh, out of this kind of Orientalist belief that if you hit the elites or the leaderships, you have an easier uh, way of or easier time in oppressing and repressing uh, the people you want to colonize, ethnically cleanse, or uh, or imprison in big uh, prisons as they did in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Sure. So I think there's also an historical structure here and probably also more immediate uh, uh, reasons.